What's going on everyone? I want to speak to you just real quick before the video gets started. Um, there have been a lot of concerns from the women that visit the platform and they have a lot of questions sometimes that I feel as a man, I cannot answer these questions. Um, I feel these issues with women need to be addressed by another woman, uh, someone who's respected, uh, someone who could definitely understand life and deliver these messages in a powerful and thought provoking way. So what I sought to do was look for someone uh, who can do that. And I have found someone and I'm very happy that she has joined the platform. She's willing to speak to the issues of women, especially issues that black women deal with, which some of them are very unique. And it's better to hear them addressed by another woman than a man like myself. So I hope you enjoy the message Sister Sadia will have for you today. Uh, she will join us as much as possible uh, to bring the messages that women are concerned about. Now, if you have any questions for Sister Sadia, um, you can send them to us here or you can send them to her uh, directly. But if it's something concerning women from now on, I'm going to pass it to her and let her address it unless you just want a man's opinion on something. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace and greetings, family. Thank you for allowing me to be on your show, The Advice Show. My name is Sadia Evangelista. And who am I? Well, first and foremost, I'm a fighter. I'm a mother of seven, ages 16 all the way down to two years of age. I'm also a criminal defense lawyer, and I'm just your, your sister. So I thank you for allowing me to be on your show. And so let's just get right into it. Now, there was a question by Sister Paula, and I just wanted to talk with Sister Paula. But maybe this may be you, and you may want some of these um, questions answered for yourself. So let's go. Hello, I just finished watching your show, the one where you talked three hours with Miss Gabriella and she's referring to Brother Phil. She says, well, I hear you say what a woman should and shouldn't do as far as behaving with a man. For example, not calling a man out of his name, like the B word, or whatever other word, or nagging. You have a good example using your wife as an example. What if a woman was like me and had no dad, but only a mom who raised me to take care of her and teach me nothing about a man or how to behave with one? How can I or so many other black women as myself overcome this? Since I'm 30, I'm expected to know things like this, but I don't. Am I, I am enough woman to admit it. First, let me say this, Sister Paula. For you to admit it and recognize that you do have a problem relating to a man, to another brother, that is the first step. And we commend you for even acknowledging that you have an issue relating to other men. Now, let me say this. Probably 95% of black women this day will be able to say the same thing you're saying. They're having issues relating to a black man. Um, at one point in time, I had issues relating to black men, period. Why? For the same reason why you had issues relating to black men. Because you haven't been taught. Because what we have been taught was something that was negative, something that was um, inferior to what we could possibly do. Now, we're taught as black women to be strong. We're taught to be independent. That's what we see everywhere we go. The images that we see is single black women, singleness. Um, but then when you see the images of black women with black men, what are those images that we see? So let's break this down. Now, we're going to talk about the history and relationship between black men and black women. And we can take this all the way back to slavery. Now, there was uh, a book that was written by Willie Lynch and how to handle his slaves. And what he did was uh, slavery was good economics. But at one point in time, you had a lot of rebellion on the plantation. And so what you saw the slave masters doing was they were killing off their slaves. And so Willie Lynch came to help the slave masters to be able to retain their slaves and reproduce so that they may have good economics. So in that, he came up with this system of separation, separating the sexes, separating the ages, separating blacks, uh, the light skins from the dark skins. But, but one of the most important things that he focused on was the black man. And so in focusing on the black man, he knew that if he couldn't control the black man, then there would be total chaos and rebellion and even death among the slave masters. And so if he can control that black man through the black woman, then he can control his entire plantation. 
So what did he do? He took the most strongest black man that he could possibly find. And what he did was he got his woman and he got his children and he killed this man in front of everyone. He tied him up to horses and split him in half. He, he tarred and feathered them. I mean, they could do everything imaginable to this black man, but they made sure that the black woman saw what was going on. Now, what psychological effect did this have on the black woman and her children? Well, what she wanted to do was to save and protect her black man. Well, she may not have been able to save and protect her husband, but she knew that through her children, she may be able to protect them. So what did she do? She made them feel like they were inferior, that they had to uh, submit to this white slave master. She put into their minds that uh, and they could be strong, but mentally they had to be inferior. And so in order to protect him, that's what he had to, she had to do. Now, here she is. She's putting this thought, this mental thought into this, this young boy's mind, this youth's mind. And so when he grows up, he's going to grow up to be a, a, a virile, strong man. However, mentally, he was going to be dominated by someone else, not only just by the slave master, but also by her. And so what you see is you have this, this stereotype, this archetype of this black woman who's teaching and who's training her children how to be docile so that they may be able to protect their own lives and she can be able to protect theirs as well. And this has this has gone throughout uh, centuries um, up until now, where we see the strong, independent black woman. We, you know, 70% of black households are headed by black women, you know, single black women. And so you have these images of Mamie, who, you know, was a, a, a big, robust black woman who took care of the slave master's children, and they made her as unattractive as possible, put a handkerchief on her head, because we're assuming that is her nappy hair up underneath. And then you had the stereotype and the image of Sapphire that Amos and Andy portrayed in, in their radio show was a, a, a sassy and a nagging and a disrespectful black woman. And so you, that image of a black woman was given to us. And then you had the stereotype or the archetype of the Jezebel, that image that was portrayed of the black woman as she was bumping and grinding and being promiscuous and sexually loose. So where did that stem from? That stemmed from her being on the auction block. And so you had to dehumanize her and make her uh, nothing but a baby maker so that she can reproduce more slaves. And so she was sexualized um, as a slave. And so that image of the Jezebel, and we see that so much um, in the videos um, on the TV, as depiction of the black woman as nothing but a promiscuous woman who, who all she does is produce babies and she's nothing but a baby mama and then you have the matriarch and the matriarch is a, a woman and that was produced back into the 1960s of the single black woman heading the, the households without her black man she's strong she's independent she doesn't need a man and you see that stereotype and so I tell you that because there are these stereotypes that have followed us since slavery and we don't even recognize that the propaganda has been set up for us to be in a particular role not only do we see that of ourselves but our black man see that of us and so we we tend to act out those images that we see of ourselves because that's all we know we don't see uh, and we do have a good image with Michelle Obama you know but as soon as she became um, the first lady of the United States the first thing that they tried to call her was a baby mama but she said her job was first most to be the first mother of the United States right as a mother not just a baby mama so these images that are attached to us we are emulating so you know we have to address the stereotypes um, that have been given to us and show that we are something different. We have to see ourselves a different way. So when we look at the nature of the man and the woman, let's use for example, when my husband comes home, I have four daughters. And as soon as he comes home, I can't get to him fast enough for my, my younger daughters running to him saying, Daddy, they want to take care of him. They want to give him consolement. They want to fix his plate. You know, it's in their nature to want to take care of their fathers. It's in our nature to want to take care of our men. And so when we get back to our, our nature and who we are, you know, the feminine side of who we are, as opposed to trying to take on the other side, you know, trying to be the man, trying to be the protector, the, the, the secure. And 
And I know in this day in society, we say, well, we have to be all that because they're not doing that for us. Yes, our black men have been beat down. Our black men don't know who they are or know their worth and their value and what has been done to them. But as a woman, and I know you're saying, that's a lot for us to have to take on. But if we recognize that's what has been done to our men and has been done to us, then we can start there to change how we relate to one another, to get back into who we really are in our own role in our natures as God would have us to be. And then we would find that we can emote and we can relate and there's more peace and not discord in our relationships. Now, there is a book that I suggest that you read, um, and it's hard to read at first digest. Uh, it was hard for me as a black woman, being a single black woman, taking care of my own um, when I first read it, but it helped me better relate to my husband. Um, it's a woman by the name of Helen Adeline. It's called Fascinating Womanhood. And she teaches you and she goes from a biblical perspective of how to relate to your man in order to bring the best out in him. And then what our roles are as a woman. You know, I don't call myself a feminist because I'm not. I'm a natural woman. Um, but I want to bring out the best in my black man and the best in my husband and the best in um, my son's period as a woman. So um, hopefully, Paula, this information that I've given you has opened up your eyes, um, helped you. Um, and I believe that, you know, self-development starts with ourselves. So if we can correct the behavior which you recognize, um, then that's, that's a great and first start. So thank you, Sister Paula, for that question. Um, and we look forward to answering any more questions in the future. Again, my name is Sadia Evangelista. You can reach me uh, on Facebook, Sadia Evangelista, Twitter, Sister Sadia X, Instagram, Sister Sadia, or you can follow my organization called QueendomCome.org, MyQueendomCome. Dot org. It's Queendom Come Incorporated, and we are a female empowerment organization teaching women and girls how to live their life on purpose, with purpose. Thank you.